Nice. Good afternoon, everyone. We're live. <laughs> Thanks for accepting our invitation. I know you're so busy, and it's our second time with you. Um, what What will happen for the rest? Um, each of us will ask a question, take turns, and one follow-up question. Um, I'll, be, I'll have the first question. Um, Okay, I've been getting feedback about some people getting confused with who you really are, like are you an activist, a leftist, or an active, you know, just an active citizen who, who, who went into the part of this. Uh, All of the above. <laughs> yeah. Can you define yourself, like uh, explain, because it's kind of hard for um, some activists. Mm -hmm. They're confused between you and Terry Castillo. So, wh what are you exactly? So, sabi ko, I'm all of the above, and they aren't uh, mutually exclusive categories anyway. So, I became an activist as a teenager in high school. And by activist, I simply mean uh, a person, a citizen who uh, is interested in or concerned about a certain issue and then wants to take action on it. And then usually uh, seeks a community, a group of like-minded people or fellow travelers uh, with whom to work so that it can be more effective. Tapos, uh, is in my own personal history, my formators uh, have been from the left. And as you were talking about earlier, the history of or the, and the etymology of the word left, uh, it started after the French Revolution where, siguro nagkataon lang, the the, I don't know, sec gen, or the, the one who was seating the delegates to the new uh, French parliament said, okay, those who want to preserve the status quo sit on the right side of the parliament, and those who want to change things sit on the left side. And that's, that for me is the classic and essential meaning of uh, being from the left community, that I fight for change. And the kind of left that I am, kasi maraming klase ng left, the kind of left that I am is someone who fights for change in all peaceful and democratic ways. And then, active citizen, well, that's actually part of the parang apelido of Akbayan, kasi the whole name is Akbayan Citizens Action Party. So, the parang ideal is active citizenship. So, kaya all of the above. And I think, I, until I'm a lola, so habang ako nabubuhay, I'll always uh, be uh, an activist. I'm an erstwhile or sometimes politician. I'm trying to be one again, uh, a legislator again, but always I'll be an advocate. Because um, they, they always, well, the impression I got from some of the uh, criticisms about it is in the left is more on the Mata side. Uh, oh. Not that, uh, well, um, you plan about it, they think you're social, mm -hmm. shadow. So is that an exclusive thing for activists? I'm also an activist. I was yeah. an activist before <laughs> in my UP days. So, um, so that I just wanted to clear that up. And you were also caught once in a yeah. demonstration uh, in Women's Day 2005. Okay. So welcome to the Okay. Um, kami Women's Day program, but we were nearly stopped there. We went to Menjola. So, siyempre, hinarangan na kami sa Welcome Rotonda. This was during the time of the State of Emergency of GMA. So, nagmenego pa kami to get up to at least Plaza Miranda. So, siyempre, tumagal yung nego, nakabarikada yung PNP doon. And then, while we were actually already winding up the program, sa katagalan ng pagharap nila sa amin, suddenly, pumasok sila sa hanay namin. So, binasag nila. Then, dinagput ako, dinagput yung mga ibang kasama namin from the labor sector. Karamihan ng mga kasama, they loaded onto a truck, police truck. Ako, physically binuhat, because I was really resisting going with them. I was pulling back <laughs> towards my kasama. So, binuhat ako. Binagay ako dun sa isang mobile. Then, pinakbo na sa pagkaring mga. Were there a charge against you? No, they didn't file any charges. After several hours, finally, nung gabi, pinauwi nila kami, except for one kasama. There's a follow-up question here. Mm -hmm. I, pero if I could add, because okay, you had an earlier yeah. part of your question. About well, I was born a middle-class girl. Yeah. I'm a middle-class girl. Yeah. I grew up a martial law baby. Tapos, simula na high school as a teenager, naging activist ako. Doon sa issue ng nuclear-free Philippines. 
So, kaya rin hindi ko na tinuloy yung pagpasok ko sa teatro. Kasi, ano na, dito na ako nahumalingan. And both art and activism are jealous mistresses. Kula nga yung full time mo eh. So, yeah. ayun, uh, yung Philippine Philippines piece, uh, nung college na immersion sa Mangingisda, na natiling student activist sa college. Uh, I was part of yung protests after the Ninoy assassination at sa revolution. Then, nung nagtapos ako sa college, kahit na I'd become a working student as a junior, doon ako nagsimula magtrabaho sa broadcasting for a decade and a half. But after college, full-time talaga sa mass movement work. Nag-organisa ako sa Mangingisda, tapos maraming taon sa peace movement, hanggang aning na taon sa peace panel. And during those years, naging founding member ako mga kamaraya. So, Uh, masyado ba akong sosyal? <laughs> ano pa ba gagawin ko para <laughs> basta ang akin is ano, simpleng pamumuhay at puspus ng pagkikipaglaban. My, my kids and I, I'm a solo mom and uh, we live simply within my budget, within my sweldo and uh, pension. Uh, may likas na. Uh, ano pa ba? We try to eat healthily but Magdalang kami kumain sa restaurant <laughs> kasi mas kipid mag home cooking. I buy clothes for my kids but not for myself. How many? I have four. Four kids? Uh, panganay ko is uh, in college, dalawa high school, isang grade school. At binabayaran ko yung tuition nila quarterly. Kung pa- pwede sa mode of payment monthly kasi apat silang nag-aaral sama-sama. And then we have one vehicle, diesel. Uh, Swerte, we have our own house. Hindi na hindi kailangan umupa na. We used to that before. Pero at least hindi mortgaged. Um, so, ganun. Um, tapos basta, I would say, I'm a middle class girl who chose to uh, work uh, with the poor. Okay, that's that all done. You're an actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, there was a, um, one more bloggers who couldn't make it. Um, it's asking a question about you and the difference between Teddy Cassini. Teddy Cassini also uh-huh. replied to the question, but uh-huh. um, we're just comparing the two, uh-huh. Bayan and uh, and the, also the uh, his group, mm-hmm. the difference. Um, is there a difference? Meron, meron. Okay, what's the difference? Um, yung iba sa mga kasama namin, mga dating kasama nila. Pero most of us, tulad ako, I, I was never a nap them. I was from high school uh, as a teenager. I was always a soft them. That's what I'm doing ngayon. Pero, uh, and there have been moments na uh, magkasama, for example, against the martial law dictatorship, pero even then may mga differences. Pero okay lang yun, ganun sana yung nature ng uh, United Front work, di ba? But, nung nagsama kami sa kongreso, we argued about several important issues that have those similar historical roots. Nag-argue kami about universality of human rights. Para sa akin, uh, human rights are for everyone, whether civilian, non-combatant, or combatant out of combat, or even combatant. Uh, at saka, though the primary responsibility for human rights protection and promotion is with the state, for sure, kasi siya ang superior force in any situation, still may accountability ang non-state actors, like the NPA, like the MILF, all other armed groups in, in the conflict. Uh, kaya, alibawa, re- yung recent example, uh, para sa akin yung pamamaril ng NPA kay Mayor Lingona, um, it, w- it was in the context of yung pag-setup nila ng checkpoints, saka yung policy nila ng pag-demand ng mga fees, permit to campaign, permit to win. Para sa akin, violations of the omnibus election code yan. Permit to campaign, eh paano yung mga um, men who have a right to hear all track records and platforms. Permit to win, bakit sila ba ang botante or sila ba ang komilat na magpapaglain? Uh, tapos, uh, sabi nila, yung pamamaril, it was not related to extortion. Well, ako naman, I say, say tell that to the politician, the candidates on, on whom they try to impose their policy of policy of fees. Tapos sabi nila, um, it happened in the context of an ongoing civil war. There's no such thing happening or going on. Um, yung ang tawag nito so yun yung, yung universality of human rights and yung accountability ng lahat ng mga grupo to respect the human rights of all lalo na mga non-military targets like Mayor Lingona at yung escort niya na PNP 
So that was not a military action kasi hindi sila legitimate military targets. Tapos nag-argue din kami sa Kongreso tungkol sa agrarian reform. Mm-hmm. It was such an uphill battle from the start. We, we totally did not have the numbers. At the end, sila lang at yung mga representative ng pinakapyudal na mga distrito sa Pilipinas ended up voting against Carper. So, meron silang sariling bill. So, kinusap ko nga yung senior rep nila noon. Sabi ko, hindi ko maintindihan yung mass line nyo. Yung the old car flow is expiring. Ito lang bill namin ang already in plenary. Parang minimum protection for the farmers habang mag expire yung old law. Why don't you support it muna? Kahit tactic lang. Yung bill nyo, it's still in committee. So, matagal pa bago siya pwede mag-ripen yung tulo. Pag naging batas na yun sa inyo, if, if it Mm, oh, uh, mo if it renders our smooth, any, at least may ano may continuity sa sa agrarian reform for the farmers. But then he said, eh, eh bakit sinasabi mo na ano uh, nakikipagsabuatan kami sa mga landlords? Sabi ko, eh kasi sabi ng isang rep na yon who ended up voting with them against carpet. Kasi sabi ng isang rep, you gave them a briefing about your bill just a week ago. Nagulat siya, hindi niya alam na alam. So, I don't know, that's on their voting record. They voted against Carper, sila lang, and those most few the Congress people, Congress persons. Ngayon, ayun, niraralihan ng mga kabataan nila yung mga press con namin, pinapaila nila kami ng disqualification case sa Comelec, mga kaso sa court. Uh, ako, I still hold on to the dream na balang araw magkaisa lahat ng mga progresibong grupo. Uh, Posible hindi na mangyari sa lifetime na <coughs> Sana sa lifetime ng mga anak namin. Yeah. So, yeah. I think also, that he said something different also. Mm. So, you will never get along. <laughs> <laughs> As of today. No, like, imagine if both of you were elected. Wow. <laughs> uh, we can expect um, you to compliment each other. Sana nga eh. Okay, I'll just uh, follow up with one question that, uh, that is similar. Uh, you supported the type of time law, is that true? No. Uh, are you a signatory to any style file, a case file versus the law? Uh, are you mga youth namin. Ah, the youth? Uh, yung mga youth namin were the ones preparing a case with other youth, hindi lang naman akbayan, pero kasama sa isa sa 15 cases in the Supreme Court. Okay, that's just my question for now. I'll yes. just get from the... No, I my first statement was we do not I do not support the unconstitutional you provisions. Would ever your first statement. Uh, may may dot dot shots, may ethicist siya kasi you cannot say everything in 140 characters. For example, mga, mga unconstitutional provisions. Uh, eventually, this was the complete uh, statement. The unconstitutional provisions have to be struck down, whether mm-hmm. in the Supreme Court or by amendment. You wrote mm-hmm. about that. Ah, pero ano la, not a full statement. It's a ah, tweet, no, full tweeting statement. lang kasi sa kainita ng ah, uh, labanan about the anti-cyber crime law. Na lalo na yung mga anti-cyber libel, mm-hmm. takedown clause, mm-hmm. real-time data monitoring. They okay, have to be struck down. Definitely. By one, by either the judicial or the legislative branch. And Rep. Walden of Akbayan has an mandatory bill. And I communicated directly to the President. Sir. Okay. It can unacceptable talaga yung mga ano na yan and called on him na kahit pa may maisulat kayong IRR dyan, do not I call him do not implement law until those unconstitutional provisions are either struck down by the Supreme Court or deleted by amendment from the law. Okay, the criticism there was you were not very visible during the act, um, during the act, the what happened in the Supreme Court? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the Black Tuesday. Tuesday. So black you, you Tuesday. were not so visible uh, then. Uh, um, so you took the route of going straight to the president. Yes. Ang dif- ang isang difference na yon is yes. that dati as an opposition party member and leader, mm-hmm. wala talagang space but the streets, okay. and we really maximize that. And I will never, and we will never quit the streets either. Because yung Yung ganyang mass mobilizations, they are part of the democratic space that we fought for. And we should always protect them. All the spaces, the street, the internet is another space where we have to protect democratic space. And for the first time in my history as an opposition person and by its history as an opposition party, ngayon lang sa administrasyon na, there's another space that was opened up which was to speak directly and put in the 
the criticisms and then the alternatives. So, ano lang, um, to, to fight on all fronts. Mm-hmm. So, yun, pero yun yung isang important difference na nakikita ko. There's an additional space that opened up that was totally closed under the previous administration na i-engage yung prime minister. We didn't know that. That we talked directly. Siyempre, I cannot naman say, Uy, mga kasama, I'm talking. Kasi yun lang kausapin ko siya directly na ano na siya, ito na naman. Alam niya kung gano'ng katigas ng ulo at kakulit. Dalawang taon ko siya. That was before he signed it eventually. Oo naman. Or that was before he signed it? During the deliberation. Kasi di ba yung unang pumutok yung concern natin nung pumasok na yung anti-cyber libel yes. provision. Mm-hmm. It was still in Senate at that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So agad, hindi na pwede. Kasi even the old si- libel law, which he didn't say anything about at first, belated he said, yeah, I'm uh, agreeable to repeal it. Yeah. Kung mas kahit yung lumang libel, it's antiquated. The UN has been calling on us to repeal it. Tapos maglalagay ng anti-cyber libel sa ano, anti-cyber crime. Okay, no, ayan na. So, but you are aware that there is a uh, being a a uh, an alternative being proposed, the Magna Carta, for the okay. internet freedom. Yes, are you aware of that? that? Yes, oh. you were actually kayo yung nag tanong well, sa akin nung una dun sa UP yes. Dilaman. We we all have, yeah. but there were there were there were um, some of our friends were actually the ones more active in crafting in crafting that. It was really the, one of the first, or if the first, um, crowdsourced. Uh, we, we didn't realized that you know Senator Miriam would eventually pick it mm-hmm. up and find it. Mm-hmm. But but people were really saying if I were the one crafting the law, this is mm-hmm. how I would do it. And it was mm-hmm. really crowdsourced. Mm-hmm. Uh, using IT people, bloggers, mm-hmm. uh, netizens, uh Parang direct democracy. Uh, uh, lawyers and all that who were online. Yeah. And then eventually uh, it was presented to Senator Miriam who had her staff look at it, they refined it and then it was filed mm-hmm. as a bill. Um if you are to be elected, is that something that you would strongly yes. support, or, or you know, what would be your view towards the kind of? Uh, in principle, I am for any legislation, including the Freedom of Information Bill, mm-hmm. that will preserve and protect, with the force of law, yung mga international commitments na natin. And as I said earlier, yung mga karapatan that we long fought for already, in uh, para more. Um, elementary forms like freedom of expression, freedom of the press, but we have to guarantee these same freedoms and civil liberties sa internet. So I would happy kung after working with Senator Miriam and Senator P on the RH law to work on this, even if she's no longer in the Senate next time, but I'll be working there to carry on that work. Yeah. The concern of many people right now, I mean, you know, um, the way some of us look at it is, mm. it's very easy to make promises True. while still on the campaign trail. Uh, the situation changes drastically the moment a person not necessarily is elected oh. into office. Oh. Uh, we've seen, for example, the freedom of information mm. being a uh, a priority, yeah. and then suddenly it's been shelved. He mentioned so, it in his press con after his first song. Yes, oh, oh. so there were things which were shelved which were high up in the campaign <laughs> promises. No, so. That is something that uh, no, we, we also want to look at the candidates, not only from what is being said, mm-hmm. but from what is eventually going to uh, be pushed once that person is elected into office. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess this is putting you on the spot. That's <laughs> what I'm here for. Or putting you on the <laughs> spot be because um, that's what we want to do, that after, after those uh, people are elected, we yeah. would really want to go back to what they said mm-hmm. prior to election, mm-hmm. what they were promising, what their advocacies were, mm-hmm. and see kung nagtutugma. Uh, that's fair kung enough. Kung talagang ipupush or pang ano lang yun, yung pang... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Fair enough. Kasi uh-huh. I also speak very frankly naman about things that I will not support. And oh, what, it's, also, what are it's also on that basis na uh, people will decide to vote for me or not mm-hmm. to vote for me. At yun din yung kanilang sisingilin sa akin if ever I get to work in the Senate. What, for example, would I not support? Uh, mas marami kasi yung isusupport ko. Support na lang muna. Ano ba? Uh, isang isusupport ko na hindi sinusuportahan ni President Noisa ngayon. Security of tenure for labor. Kasi nga, ang laganap ngayon sa Pilipinas, and not just here but all over the world, is contractualization. Yeah. Pero we have to give workers uh, it's a, it's not even a non-wage benefit, it's a basic right. And it's a basic uh, social protection against uh, 
yung ano yung ill effects of the current model of globalization uh, and then but back to your original question also well um better siguro than me you could ask yung mga naging kasama ko the past three decades that I've been an activist causes that I first espoused as an activist tapos nung nagkaroon ng pagkakataon to work in the house na itinula ko talaga like uh, I was a student nung unang dinadraft yung unang-unang agrarian reform law way back in uh, 1987 uh, tapos talagang sinubaybayan ko yan through its two earlier incarnations until ilaban ko yung Carper until it was passed into law. Uh, an early interest of mine also has been uh, health care. Uh, I guess that's natural to any human being naman. And that's why, while in Congress, kahit nasa minority na ako noon, because this was post-Hello Garcia, nag- <coughs> nag-opposition na kami since then, tinula ko talaga yung uh, cheaper medicine. So that was another big fight kasi Grabe yung lobby money that the international pharma uh, companies brought to bear on us. So uphill battle din yun yung simula to finally we passed it into law. Then RH, I never let go of that. Kahit na nung kainita ng pagpanat ng Catholic hierarchy, all their threats about we will, we will destroy electorally anyone who support this. But just ano, um, kaya ko naman to stick things out. Uh, regardless of the threatened consequences. So, ayun. I'm going to ask something that was asked on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Medyo ano to, ha? Uh, I'll, I'll just read it na lang the way it was posted. Uh, why didn't she speak to her winning brave personality mm-hmm. where people <laughs> admired her? Singing and ganda slogan in her ads makes her a weak candidate. She has it, but she needs to be careful in her campaign materials. Okay. Well, maraming salamat sa comment at sa kasapayo. Uh, yung ganda was there at the very start, magandang laban, which is for me a very Filipino expression na kanyari uh, magtataya ka sa isang laban, tapos may dehado, pero uh, magandang laban kasi may pinaglalaban, at saka malay natin, baka may fighting chance. So yung, that's the Filipinism that was there from the very start. And then ngayon, it's more of yung paglalaban ka, aalagaan ka. So the consistent element has been the laban, the pagiging palaban. And then, well, singing, sorry ha, talagang, yun ang first love ko, bago ko mga mga naging aktivista. Nasa, nasa Sound of Music ako sa rap, and the time na, Mommy brought me to that forum of Nuclear Free Philippines Coalition in summer after sophomore year high school. I was actually uh, preparing to audition for South Pacific naman. Kaya lang, parang na-hijack ako ng activism. Hindi na ako nakabalik sa teatro. And, sorry, uh, pag masaya ako, kumakanta talaga ako. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not shy about being Pinoy that way. Kutulan natin, mahilig sa musika. Even though, yun na nga, minsan nami misinterpret. So, salamat naman sa pagkakato na, na ipaliwana. Uh, but yun, yung paghihing pala, hindi na mawawala sa pagkatao ko yun. Eh, ever since I was a kid, uh, until I grow old, habang nabubuhay ako, ganun. And whether sa opposition or sa administration. What do you think that that trait from is that uh, yes I mean uh, your family thanks for asking yeah. may kwento yan eh uh, in 65 before I was born ang mga magulang ko like many middle class people at that time sabi nila they voted for Marcos kasi akala nila alternative siya sa presidente noon pero by 1969 parang nakikita na nila yung mga pagpaglabag sa kangarapatan yung mga korupsyon so ano nanlamig na sila sa tanga they didn't vote for him again in 69 Nung binagsak yung Marshall on 1972, I was six. Tapos, uh, I remember talaga, very visual at saka auditory memories ko. Uh, we we would g- gather for family reunions yung sa bahay ng isang tito namin. Pag maabot na kami ng curfew doon, so syempre sleepover na. Masaya kami mga magpipisa kasi we could sleep together. But I, uh, we would look over the balcony nung bahay ng tito ko to the dining table below tapos yung lazy susan pa ikot-ikot ganyan kanan kaliwa passing food nag-uusap yung mga tito at tita namin and over the years during martial law 
nag-iba talaga ang tenor ng conversation sa table. Naging disapproving, naging galit, naging takot. So talagang uh, nag-shift to opposition feeling yung family namin. And my first mobilization, yung 1978 um, noise barrage, uh, laban. Si Ninoy Aquino were running from prison. Uh, Doon lang sa garden namin, sa likod, patsya, pats and pants, and options. And then yun, si Mami din ang nagdala sa akin sa forum ng Nutri-Free Philippines Coalition. Nakita ko doon yung Tres Marias noon, si Nini Queso Matansenia, Sister Mary John Manansan, Mary Concepcion Bautista. So, it really started uh, with my family. Tapos sa uh, school, high, lalo na high school and then hanggang college, I was so lucky. Ang dami kong mentors na mga aktivista din in their own time na hinubog ako inside the classroom at saka sa mga extracurricular activities. Uh, so yun, and, uh, nanggagaling doon sa pamilya, sa mga mentors ko, yung uh, ins- na proud ako sa pagiging Pinoy. So, lagi kong dinudugtong doon sa kasaysayan natin since the Katipunan pa and all the change movements down through the decades. Hanggang ngayon, I, I see a, a line, a tradition there. Uh, Yan, arts always uh, inspire me and siguro yung pagka-critical nature ng mga artists and cultural workers uh, kaya rin ako uh, ganito, I'm inspired by nature and there are things there's a certain order in the chaos of nature na hinahanap ko rin sa ipunan natin. My faith as well yung nung high school ako at college talagang inabasa ko na yung liberation theology, yung pagiging church of the poor so uh, yan, all these uh, came together, uh, have come together to uh, make me the kind of political person that I am. Um, I was, I mean, the first of all, I, I can attest to the singing. I was actually <laughs> at the Bote Bear's family in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is, because uh, I know one of your relatives. Uh, si Maan. Si Peyan, actually. Ah, si Peyan. Yes, uh, oh, they, 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 all, they all sang. <laughs> so, I, it's not just Nisa Bote Bear's singing to the family, apparently. Oh, um, and there's Father Eddie on the other. <laughs> yes, that. Oh. oh. The composer, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask, because you mentioned earlier, you do have now have a privileged position, mm-hmm. which you can talk to the president directly. I mean, what is the relationship between Akbayan, you, Yun Bayan, and the government? Because mm-hmm. this is actually one of the favorite talking points of the, that particular faction of the progressive movement. Uh, <laughs> okay. You're no longer an opposition party. You've been co-opted. Uh, Mm-hmm. And for them, it sounds like a dirty word, except no. if they're doing it. Of course, co-opation is a dirty yeah. word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's just my, that's just my, you know. But uh, what's your relationship? Uh, I mean, that that was what to clarify. Well, there's a question you want to respond to. We are in coalition with mm-hmm. the liberals. For the first time in the history of Akbaya, na lagi kami ng opposition noon, when 2010 came around, and several presidential boss asked us to join their coalition to support them. Eventually, after uh, many months of discussion, eventually, the decision to make a president no, because of three reasons. Uh, una, marami kami positive legislative experiences kasama niya at ng mga liberal sa House, and then even when he moved on to the Senate. So, lalo na sa mga usapin ng uh, fiscal reform, security sector reform na mga passions niya, yung mga congressional inquiries, lalo na when he was chair of the Human Rights Committee of the House, kahit nung ang inimbestiga ay yung Asyanda Luisita Massacre, na nag-inhibit siya, pero he directed his uh, committee secretariat to really push through with the hearings even on-site sa Asyanda. At talagang ginawa nila for his instructions. Uh, nung magkakasama kami sa House, Ilan kami sa masipag na magdebate sa budget taon-taon, kahit hanggang madaling araw na. And we shared many experiences of fighting what we were sure were losing causes, pero just to make it of record lang, lalo na yung mga early impeachment complaints against GMA. Tapos pangalawa, at that time, siya yung presidential na pinaka kami at least minimum reform agenda na we could support at saka we could, we could stand beside him to fight for it. Mga minimum agenda ng uh, expanding civil and political liberties. Mga minimum agenda ng modernizing yung mga institusyon sa gobyerno at saka sa ating libuna na 
uh, para sa amin sa akbayan na democratic left, stepping stones, necessary stepping stones towards longer term, more strategic reforms. And then last but not least, at that time, siya yung presidential na para sa amin, least likely to, speaking of cooptation, least likely to enter into an accommodation with GNA. Tansya namin sa kanya, siya yung pinaka sisimilin yung uh, accountabilities for for allegations of abuse, of corruption. So, yun. Tapos, uh, hanggang ngayon, in coalition kami sa kanya. Uh, kahit na hindi kami nagkakasundo sa security of tenure, hindi kami nagkasundo sa mga unang pagpuposisyon sa mining, uh, hindi kami nagkasundo sa uh, usapin ng anti-cybercrime law. But, uh, it's a, ano eh, it's a, it's a critical and respectful um, relationship. And one more thing, para sa akin, itong pagiging in coalition namin sa kanya and an established party like the liberals for the first time in our lives as a party, it prefigures the kind of coalition politics na nakikita namin kailangan in a modern political system with genuine political parties. Uh, I'm for a shift to a parliamentary form of government. Para dyan, you have to have real and strong parties na capable of forming governments together or dissolving kapag may differences in principle talaga. So, para sa akin, itong pag-coalition namin sa kanila with all its uh, imperfections and inadequacies, it's a real practice for coalition politics in the future. So, yeah. My, uh, my follow-up question would then be, uh, since you've, you're, you've already indicated that you would support the shift in government, would uh-huh. there be is that buy-in backing a new proposal in the next Congress to uh, convene a constitutional review mm-hmm. body or convention. This is a demand that's not just being made by left-wing people, Uh-oh. but people who are also on the center or on the right. Uh, it's not yet a priority for us right now, but it's in our uh, party uh, platform. Uh, and I don't think it's probable na magbubukas din dyan si President Noy anytime soon. Baka meron siyang at least sentimental attachment to the current constitution kasi core constitution. Mm-hmm. Pero, I don't think that it's impossible na towards the end of his term at least <coughs> mag-initiate siya ng process ng public consultations. Kasi hindi rin lang naman cosmetic, automatic shift ang constitutional reform. You have to generate those requirements. Na and, and one way to do that is just to get the public conversation going. Uh, kailangan ba ito? Ano yung mode? Ano talaga yung sa subject to amendment? Ano yung outcome na gusto natin. Uh, at saka, I'm not for wholesale amendment of the Constitution. Yun lang that would strengthen our democracy like a shift of parliament reform. Halimbawa, against ako, napalitan yung 60-40 provision on national economy and patrimony that should stay forever to protect yung priority rights ng mga Pilipino dito sa ating bansa kumpara sa mga dayuhan. We're already skirting it through laws like the Philippine Mining Act of 1995, for example. My final question, then, this is uh, with regard to that, um, the Constitution 60 mm. um, I, I know there are some people who are want to see it out because they uh-huh. believe that, um, you know, the, the problem is that in a globalizing world, you need, you, you need to shape things up, you need to bring in a kind of foreign competition that mm-hmm. will force Filipinos to adopt more global standards, mm-hmm. more, um, you know, uh, more disciplined working methods, so on and so forth. What would you say to those objectors? To, to achieve the global benchmarks at para maging uh, mas competitive tayo sa mga ugali natin, uh, it's not just amending that that kind of a constitutional provision na daan papunta ron. In this globalized world, in fact, the most industrialized countries who in the Philippines may be allied with yung mga ganong interest na i-delete na lang yung constitutional provision na yan. In their own home countries, they have the same constitutional standards. Binibigyan din nila ng pangunahing prioridad at protection yung sarili nilang mga kababayan. So, it's unfair for them and it's foolish for us to bow to demands to dilute yung minimum 60% ownership and equity for Filipinos just because they say that's the way to bring in foreign direct investments. In fact, kahit sa mga pag-aaral ng business community, it's not the constitutional limitation on say land ownership na, na sagka sa pagpasok ng mas marami at quality foreign direct investments. Ang pinaka-importante sa kanila for there to be a predictable policy environment na yung mga batas 
governing business and commerce in the country and global trade mas maayos and applied equally to all so equal application uh, of the law to all so but ganyan kaya nilang magnegosyo at kaya nilang kumita this is the way they do in their home countries so your so your concern is more that if you if you were elected you will make sure that uh, legal these legal protections apply equally rather than yes. elected and the constitutional provision has to stay in perpetuity. It's even without a uh, political lens, it just makes common sense. You take care of your household first, then you can be uh, a good neighbor uh, in your community. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My question is mm -hmm. we all know that there are women who are politicians for women empowerment, mm -hmm. say, for example, for the mm -hmm. Last year, you encouraged the Philippines and other Asian countries to decriminalize prostitution. Do you think Philippines is ready for that and decriminalization of prostitution doesn't cover them? <coughs> well, I have to confess na hindi ko pa nabasa yung primary text ng uh, issuance niya ng UN. Pero, uh, what I can say in response is, ang tinutula ko is an anti-prostitution bill. Uh, kahit sa mga prostituted women all over the world, there are at least two schools of thought about paano mas magiging rights-based yung pagtrato ng gobyerno at nilipunan sa kanila. There are mga kabaro ko, prostituted women in the Netherlands, for example, sa kanila, prostitution is work. So, ang rights-based approach nila ay uh, protect their rights as working people. Kaya importante yung lisensyado sila, uh, City Hall will give them quality uh, health care, check-ups, yung mga, mga um, contraceptive supplies, tapos ipopulis ng maayos yung neighborhood nila para they won't be subject to sexual abuse, etc. Dito naman sa Pilipinas, and the community of prostituted women and prostitution survivors whom I work with and Affine works with, ang kanila naman is, they want an alternative. Uh, at yun yung nakapaloob sa anti-prostitution uh, bill na ito, which has two main components. One is, ilipat yung criminal liability which till now is born almost solely by the prosecuted woman. Lipat dun sa mga talagang kumikita sa industriya ng prostitution. And in, industriya talaga siya. Prostitution here, it's just the domestic phase of international human trafficking. Human trafficking is the international expression of prostitution here. So, lipat dun sa mga establishment owners, sa mga bugaw, sa mga customers, sa mga errant law enforcers who, when they uh, pick up a prostituted woman on the street, sabi na, uh, Okay, vagrancy law, and then, ano, ah, kukotongin nila, or some of them they even rape her, gano'n. And then, pangalawa, bigyan ng alternative livelihood at saka uh, counseling therapy yung mga prostituted women and prostitution survivors para maka-transition to a life that is, ano, oh optimal uh, for them. So, whether the UN was calling for legalization of prostitution and kung legalization ala sa Netherlands, that's not what I would support. It's, uh, it's not that I oppose rights of uh, working women working in that industry in that country. But ang talagang preference ng mga prostituted women dito ay mas yung tanggalin sa kanila yung criminalization at lagay dun sa mga talagang nagsasagawa nito and give them alternatives. Um, the second question ko, um, sa RH law, mm -hmm. uh, it shows you uh, sex education. Uh -oh. So the continuous um, argument coming from anti marriage people mm -hmm. is that it, in, yeah, it encourages premarital sex for teenagers. Mm -hmm. How will the law assure mm -hmm. that engagement of premarital sex will not be rampant? Okay. Well, actually, nobody needs to encourage young people to be interested in sex. It's natural. And in fact, it's normal. Uh, it's one of the positive aspects of being human. If we believe in God, that's one way that He created us. Uh, parang, sabi nga, everything in the universe is sexed. Everything is attracted to each other. That's why we don't fall apart uh, in some black hole in, in the cosmos. Uh, so, ang tawag nito, um, and the, the premise of age-appropriate uh, adolescent RH and sexuality education is to uh, give young people the correct information and uh, form them in a positive way so that they will recognize this powerful uh, energy aspect of their humanity and uh, use it responsibly, use it to become happy and when the right time comes to establish their own, uh, their own families. Kahit wala pa nga yung RH law, problema na natin ang 
teenage pregnancy, uh, teenage abortion, teenage STDs, including HIV and AIDS. Among the original, sorry, ang kulit ko, I, I said this when we were together sa UP, but it, it's true there, sabi nila eh, of the original ASEAN 6, tayo na lang ang mataas pa rin ng incidence of teenage pregnancy. Everybody else in our home region has brought it down. And one key instrument has been sex education. So how to assure na uh, this will not make all these problems more rampant? Evidence, research. All the countries that instituted sex education of this mode uh, have seen uh, yung, uh, the, the rising of the average age of sexual initiation. So, pinagpapaliban. Kasi part of the ABC, eh, sa sex ed, eh, is abstinence pa rin. Pero kung sexually active na, be faithful, be monogamous, what multiple partners? Kasi then yung geometrically multiply the problems. Pangatlo, see, if you're sexually active, young person, use contraceptives or condoms. So, ayun, the research shows na ganun yung mga public good na lumalabas sa sex education. Later uh, sexual initiation, fewer teenage pregnancies, fewer teenage STDs. Last one. Um, you're part of the field. How do you ensure that you're part of the Even before, nagbibisagree, kahit ako, kahit kay President <laughs> Noy, at alam niya yan, dalawang taong ko siya kinulit about the RH law. Mas matagal ko siyang kinulit about kasi ang nagbibisita. There was just no need to tweet and Facebook about it before kasi siyempre pag medyo kinukulit mo isang tao medyo hindi mo naman i-broadcast yun um, tapos ngayon within Team Pinoy we have uh, a difference of opinions on some important issues and it's comfortable kami to express it within hearing of each other sa mga sa mga public fora uh, and I guess my track record in the house speaks for itself uh, also and my track record in, in the mass movement so unless uh I suddenly, whatever, suffer some kind of a breakdown. Unfortunately, I'll probably be like this for the rest of my life. Hello, po. Hi. Um, so, I'm Janina Sapas from Aimla and Beauty Health Water Society. One of the primary concerns po namin sa NOC, sa Nanaga Advocate for Health, mm -hmm. is the status quo and the na binaba ng Supreme Court regarding the RH law which is very funny kasi binag, bi, um, binaba siya right after the IRR was signed. So it was kind of a big, um, it, it was kind of a heartbreak for all advocates na kung kailan i-implement na talaga siya, siya kasi binaba. And we all know that you are one of the champions of the RH movement and the RH battles. So given that you're already busy with the campaigns and given that sa June po magsisimula yung deliberation sa SC regarding the RH law, ano po yung extra preparations na ginagawa nyo in order for you to support or to be present during the deliberation? Well, yung oral arguments na yan before the Supreme Court, yung talaga yung last big battle. Yung mm -hmm. yun yung last time. Mm -hmm. uh, we won the vote in the House. Uh, just before that, we won the uh, certification as urgent from the President. Di talaga natin inasahan itong no set back the Supreme yeah, Court. Pero sige, if that's what it takes, uh, so we are preparing for that. And if we win this, finally, that law will be implemented. Uh, I took a uh, half day off from the campaign sorties, yung araw ng uh, consul, public consultation mm -hmm. sa IRR sa Luzon, mm -hmm. sa Manila. And we are preparing now for the oral arguments. Uh, sit, we're going to sit down with the legal team, see ano na yung preparations to put forward the arguments and to answer mm -hmm. yung arguments na hinain nung dun sa anin na kaso mm -hmm. which were filed against the implementation. At uh, tuloy-tuloy yung pag-meeting ng mga advocates, pagpaplano, and dun sa mga nasa direct services, syempre, all the more urgent yung sinusustain nila yung family planning services that they are already making available, even without the benefit of yung across-the-board DOH implementation uh, ng batas. Um, Ma'am, yung isa pong um, repercussions of being an, an RH advocate mm -hmm. and being very, um, very loudly, mm -hmm. uh, very loud in terms of speaking for RH was that the CDCP is, let's just use the word that, they, that we already know they're doing, is endorsing against mm -hmm. Um, you. So they have formed a movement called the White Movement, uh, 
there was the tarpaulin regarding Team Patay, mm. where she were included. Congratulations, po. Salamat. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, po. Um, at least now we know who to vote for. Um, so, and the white movement is making noise, yeah. talaga. Mm. So, how are you dealing with? We can, we can. I guess I can call it a threat of the white movement to your candidacy. Well, the first, for me, the most important and first way to deal with it is to counter yung mga uh, kasinungalinga na sinasabi nila tungkol sa RH law. By, ano yung totoong naman ng RH law? Anong intensyon at magiging epekto nito? Yung, sa, yung kabutihan sa kalusugan natin mga kababaihan, sa edukasyon ng ating mga kabataan, yung suporta sa mga pamilya, lalo na yung mga mahihirap magplan para makaahon sa kahirapan. The only way to counter Sabi nila, it's voters' education, it's, it's citizens' miseducation mm -hmm. and disinformation. So the only way to counter that is to keep telling the truth over and over about uh, the RH law. Mm -hmm. Pangalawa, um, naniniwala naman ako na walang Catholic vote na anti-RH. Kung may Catholic vote man, uh, it's pro-RH. I believe na yung mga surveys na nagpakita noon pa na majority of Filipinos support the then RH bill, na nakapaloob doon yung majority ng mga katoliko. I believe that any Catholic vote would be pro-RH dahil kahit anecdotally man lang, as a Catholic myself, ang mga nakukusap ko mga kapakatoliko are passionately Catholic at the same time passionately uh, pro RH and I believe na yung mga survey results noon tungkol sa R then RH bill masasalamin din mm -hmm. sa election results on May 13. Ma'am, a final question. Another um, issue for women nowadays, actually not for, just for women but for married couples, mm -hmm. is the divorce law. Uh, na mm -hmm. final na po I believe sa Congress. Mm -hmm. um, meron po, after, after the RH law has been signed by the President, Naglabas po ng statement si Mr. Lasharda that mm. the Pinoy administration will not support divorce. Uh -huh. And as far as I know, ma'am, you are pro-divorce law. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, kung makakapasok po kayo sa Senado, and knowing that you're a liberal party, um, you're part of the liberal party, are you willing to go against the administration to lobby and to support and to fight for the divorce law? Mm -hmm. Actually, ako bayan ako, hindi ako liberal. Pero in coalition kami sa kanila, oo. And um, wala pa rin namang posisyon yung Akbayan Party on mm -hmm. any divorce bill. Mm -hmm. Pero matagal na yung Akbayan women na nagsasabi, pag-usapan natin yung issue nito. Mm -hmm. So my own take is also my own personal conviction uh, about divorce. Uh, sinusuportahan ko yung or pabor ako sa divorce dahil lalo na sa mga sitwasyon na meron ng wife battery mm -hmm. or marital rape or child abuse. Mm -hmm. At tingin ko sa ganyang mga konteksto, kailangan protektahan yung mga babae at mm -hmm. mga bata. And for couples, di ba? Kung special mm -hmm. celebrity couples or ordinary couples, um, kailangan may options to move on and to be happy again. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, I have to confess, hindi ko pa napag-aralan yung there are actually two bills pending in Congress. Yung isa pro-divorce, yung isa anti-divorce. Wala akong alam na pending sa Senate. And my own platform for this incoming term is centered, yes, on women and very much on universal health care. So, wala pa sa priority ko ang isang divorce bill. Mm -hmm. But that is my own conviction about the issue of divorce. So, at the very least, pag-usapan na natin mm -hmm. sa ating lipunan kasi hindi na acceptable yung status quo in a good number of Philippine marriages. And we have to generate options for people. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. I wanted to ask this question po. Kasi sinabi niyo rin po ang awal na po na request sa support ka. What made you support, uh, what made you an LGBT rights advocate? Ah, yung, yung isang tito ko was a gay man. Uh, he was an artist, a poet siya, visual artist. He left the Philippines a long time ago kasi hindi siya maging masaya dito. They had to go away para lang magkaroon ng space to be who he really was. Tapos, um, ano, nagkasakit siya sa States. He died there alone. Sinundo pa siya ng mom ko. She brought his ashes home. And uh, as I was growing up, 
Yung mga hanggang ngayon, dumami yung mga kaibigan ko na gay or lesbian, the bisexual, transgender, so uh, just the whole range of different ways of being human. So, kaya pinaprioritize ko yung anti-discrimination bill kasi kung rights-based approach tayo, ayaw natin ng second class anybody, second class citizens, second class relationships. Uh, para sa akin, ano, if I believe in human rights, just as therefore I believe in women's rights, then I also believe in LGBT rights. Uh, and for me, in fact, everything that I believe in and I fight for and I love, it stems first and foremost from being a woman. And para ang naisip ko kasi, yun yung unang inaalam sa tao pag pinanganak tayo, di ba? Yung babae ba lalaki and baby? And everything stems from there. So, yung expression natin of who we are, who we love, it's part of being human. It's the most basic thing that we have to cherish. Kaya gano'n. Okay. Good afternoon po. Kung siguro ang series of questions, kung nasa deliver mo tayo, they're limited to 140 characters. Nay! So, how would you describe, how would you explain ano yung sock them? Oh, oh my God! <laughs> okay, 140 characters. Sock them. Uh, political democracy, uh, socialized economy, humanist culture. That's a rough attempt. <laughs> That's more than 140. No, no, no. Hindi pa, hindi pa naman. Oh, sige, sige. And uh, ecology. Yeah. And feminism. Ayan. Kasha pa sa ano. Kasha pa. Yung sa ano, yung the psychology mo, you're also against, you're part of the anti-nuclear anti you know, yes, movement. Yes. So, are you still a part of the... Do you still believe that we shouldn't have nuclear power here yes. in the Philippines? Oh, dapat forever mothballed ang bataan nuclear power plant. Kung may magmatigas ng ulo pa, tignan lang nila yung mga industrialized and nuclear-powered nations of the world. Pa-atras sila sa nuclear energy. Even by legislation sa Germany, sa iba pang mga bansa, pa-atras sa nuclear energy. At saan sila umaatras? Sa renewable energy. Yan yung sustainable, yan yung mas environmentally friendly, yan yung may clear path away from dependence on fossil fuels, at yan yung mas malinaw na mas malinis na energiya talaga. So, uh, yun. Ito silang years ago tayo sa Congress? Silang years ago? Anim. 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 Tapos, yung term nyo, yung sa term nyo, yung paano ginagamit yung pidal na no? bayan? Ah, nice. I believe in the abolition of the four parallel system okay. kasi pinagmumula ng masyadong marami incidents ng corruption at, at saka patronage. Plus, hindi naman trabaho ng legislators na makipagkompetensya sa executive to design and implement development programs. Dapat ang legislature natin nakafocus sa legislation, including passing the budget, uh, congressional inquiries in aid of legislation, uh, impeachment, and such processes kapag kailangan. So, abolish the poor file system sa legislature. Ilipat lahat yung punto sa executive from Office of the President, MEDA, departments, down to the LGUs, lalo na sa LGUs kasi sila yung nakababad sa sitwasyon ng tao. Alam nila yung sitwasyon, problema, uh, pangarap. Mm-hmm. Tapos, but, pero habang, and, and uh, yeah. uh, bayan na lang habit sa hindi since 98, since we entered the house, syempre habang hindi popular na <laughs> call yan at hindi pa ina-abolish yung port battle system, sa PIDA, at the very least, dapat gamitin siya in a transparent and accountable way. So, yung mga kami, pinupost namin sa website, kinilala yan sa, ng Transparency International as one of the three most accountable offices in the house. Uh, dapat transparent and accountable at dapat ang paggamit niya base sa desisyon ng ordinaryong mamamaya. Hindi lang ng kung sino ni Congresista o, o Senador. Kung nasa Senate ito kayo, tapos nangyari ulit yung pinigay ng 200 made them sa ano, Christmas bonus. Ano yung gagawin niya? Da, hindi ko tatanggapin kasi kahit sa household, pag biglang may ma-generate na savings, hindi ko naman dinadagdagan yung allowance ng mga anak ko. Hindi, mm-hmm. hindi ko rin ginagasos para sa sarili ko. Nagasosin ko para sa mga prior, parang priority programs namin sa pamilya, which are always underfunded. Isusubi ko for yung next 
installment ng tuition ng mga bata, isusubi ko for, huwag naman sana if every one of us gets sick. Kasi sa ngayon, PhilHealth, 30% ano, reimbursement lang after a quarter of a year. So medyo malaki rin ang money out even for a middle class uh, person like me. Um, so, kung may, kung may yari ganyan ulit sitwasyon sa Senado and if I'm working there, hindi ko talaga katatanggapin. It should, they should have given it back to the general fund. They should have reverted it back to the general fund from DBM para gasusin lalo na sa mga social services at sa mga social reform programs. Dagdagan nila ng funding ang ano, for peace. Tapos sa loob eh, um, matagal-tagal na rin ito yung nakainisyon uh, campaign sa ano, Um, nakikita niyo ba at, at this moment, it's more of, lalo na sa national or even sa local, it's more of personality politics now, rather than, uh, than, part, than party or, or, or political stance. Um, question ko doon, hindi ba kayo una nahihirapan? Pangalawa, ano yung pwedeng gawin in terms of legislature para ma, oh, maayos to? Uh, mahirap talaga, uh, <laughs> uphill battle pa rin. Uh, although just like the RH bill at mm-hmm. the start, uh, mirap talaga ang bakahin yung may mga efforts naman eh, earnest efforts to make politics more platform and track records based, pero syempre magbabago magbago yung kultura natin at yung sistema so talagang mabigat na dalahin yung popularity, name recall lalo na ang daming mas, may, mas masigip ang field ngayon eh mm-hmm. ang daming incumbent re-electionist dating bumabalik Uh, kamag-anak ng incumbent, so mahirap talaga kung, kung hindi naman familiar yung apelido mo. Uh, what can we do legislatively? Uh, siguro yung ano, tuloy-tuloy na electoral reforms is one clear track na binuksan na natin. Nagsimula na sa party list law, nasunda na election automation. Uh, ngayon, bagamat medyo binigo ng Supreme Court ruling, may may efforts in the right direction ng COMELEC regarding campaign finance reform. Uh, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina na development of political party system, yun ang pinaka makapangyarihan talaga to break this personalistic politics and make our uh, political system more modern, more responsive. Um, legislatively, ayun, dapat um, bills to support further electoral reforms. Uh, and generally, yung, ano, yung, yung conduct ng mga legislators natin, sana mas maging party-based din. Mas meron talaga party discipline. Uh, yun. So, so, tapos yun. May nawali ko yung inyo yung mga survey results. O, oh, syempre. Uh, <laughs> ngayon, yung kasi we're, we're nearing the last few days of the election. Uh-huh. Nanotice, na, nanotice ko rin na mas nagiging intense yung uh, fighting for the uh, yung mga slots. And, and also, nangyayari, minsan nagiging personal na yung mga attacks. Uh-huh. So, how do you feel about this? And are you prepared for Let's say things getting personal. They've been personal yeah. for a long. I've I mean, been called the worst things. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> sa mga dating laban na. Um, uh, so well, yeah, I'm prepared for that. Di ba sabi nila, if you're uh, well, a reverse yung if you're in the kitchen, then you better be able mm. to take the heat. Uh, at the same time, hindi naman pa ding tanggapin na this is the best <coughs> scenario forever. Kaya it's important to do yung mga electoral reforms. And then, kasi habang sinusunong din natin yung electoral reforms, mas may parang enabling environment na magbago din yung political culture natin. Sometimes as difficult as those political and especially economic changes are, minsan pinakamahirap yung cultural change. Pero pag yun yung nagawa natin, then it somehow makes those other changes a little less difficult and it consolidates them. Pag may political change or may economic change at talagang inuun ng mamamayan kasi nagbago yung kamalayan natin, That, that change can stick talaga uh, for the future. So, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Medyo, hindi na mas nangyong mga ito. So, ano, um, personality. Oh, sorry? In personality. In personality. Personality as you. Ah, yeah. 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 Oh. Ayun. So, I've, I've been there mm-hmm. for years. Kahit nung activist ako before mm-hmm. I get became a politician. Grabe rin yung mga, mga polemics, ganyan, ganyan. Yeah. But, Uh, I guess that that's that's part of it. I just have to keep trying to uh, raise the level, and not just to tell the mga katunggal eh, pero to remind ourselves <coughs> also na okay, let's keep it on this level. Hindi personal issues, track record, platform, platform, platform. Do you shield your children from it? Hindi na. I can't. They're yeah. they're big na eh. 
meron akong 20 year old sa kadalawang teenager <coughs> kahit yung bunso ko na 11 minsan siya pa yung mag update sa akin mama I heard on the radio na ganito ganyan and they're very opinionated so uh, wala namang totoong shielding eh. kasi parang mm. very porous yung boundaries between home and society and uh, in a way that's the healthy way parang ang role lang ng mga, mag- mga magulang and other elders and mentors is to to help the young person understand what ma overwhelm and tapos to develop their own values na to, to engage the world. Kasi ano ko, oh, sa mga, let's say, yung mga, yung mga tao na go work sa office, yung tao na gano, or even yung mga self-employed, mm-hmm. but what will, ano, Miss Fee Santavero spring to the Senate mm-hmm. for them? Inalaban ko pa rin talaga yung security of tenure. Mm-hmm. Even while, you know, we're working on convincing the President about it, pero, kailangan talaga ng ano, manggagawa ang empleyado, ang security of them. Nobody is waiting for kawang gawa. People just want a chance to work para makatanggap ng sweldo o sahod para buhay ng makatao ng pamilya. Uh, so, that's for uh, people working in the offices. Ano yung pangalawa? Self-employed. And then, yung mga self-employed. Then, n- never to forget the women. Ngayon na umaarangkab yung ekonomiya, parang rockstar, Philippine economy in Asia, but we still have to do a lot of the equity part of the work. Let let women not be forgotten, including solo moms. Let me. I think government could uh, give a lot more support to women, including solo mothers, sa usapin ng trabaho at saka uh, hanap buhay, uh, negosyo ng sa mga, mga SMEs. Uh, and, and to add, uh, kaya important yung security of them, because all over the world, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, nahihirapan talaga to sustain unions, labor movement. Ang bigat ng kalaban talaga. So, we have to provide minimum protections for working people uh, to be able to work and to enjoy the rights and benefits due them uh, under the law. So, isa yung security of tenure. Then, dapat kasama lahat ng working people, including women, dun sa mga uh, PhilHealth, SSS, or GSIS, etc., etc. Social protection. Thank you. Yes, po. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, sorry. Pasige. Pati ba, ma, may I go out to the, I go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, to the bathroom. I will talk to it. Okay, thank you.